just put his lead on and we'll just go for a walk down the road and we'll just see what we're dealing what with. Like, yeah, okay. But yeah, you, you, you said that he hated the harness, right? And so many dogs do. This is probably when he was six months, I guess. Yeah, so we'll go out the front door. So I imagine this is your house, I don't. Okay. And all we're gonna do is just walk to the end of the road and then back. Front door. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, for some reason the front door's really playing up. He doesn't seem to want to shut from the outside. Yeah, but you'll be surprised how many trainers go, oh, let's use a harness. Harness is the best for dogs and everything like that. But it's not really because most dogs dislike them. And then you get the other dogs that don't mind them, but all you do is reward their pulling with comfort. So that's. No, but this ain't nice. A couple of times you've just had like three major jerks on your arm, which isn't going to do your shoulder any favours. Okay, so turn around and just come back towards me. See, there you go. Come on. You can't do it just away with the fairies. Not, that's all right. What? That's all right. But no, it's, it's the sudden jerks that. So, oh, so usually, I don't know, maybe there aren't many cats around here or something. Yeah. But like that, again, that's jerk number four. And of course, if that, that continues through your walk, you might not realise it but there's going to be a lot of shoulder problems. Oh, and there you go. Chewy. What's that, just because you saw some birds? Maybe, I don't know. Oh, there we go. And this is, this is him mild, yeah? So this isn't even him at his worst. But again, the, the, the walk's not pleasant for either of you, really, because even though he is, when he is walking by your side, that lead is so short and tense, yeah. it's still constant tension going on. So let's take him back in mind and we'll start again. Come, oh, he's doing something. Come on. What is he doing? No, the birds. Two, come on, this way. Come on. So it's just chewy. How we doing, mate? You just walk in front. So it's this less than five minutes <laughs> later. Chewie's walking like a dream. So switch Chewie from a normal collar and shock absorbing lead just to a slip lead. So should I be rewarding him, saying, you know, good boy and all that sort of thing, or just you can do. ignore him? And just but you have to be careful because sometimes in trying to do right by rewarding your dog and telling them they're a good boy and how you create excitement and excitement makes the brain move forward. So if you start going, good boy, Chewie, good boy, he's liable to start pulling because uh, it generates yeah. excitement, yeah? But this is a reward in itself because contrary to belief, when a dog's pulling like a freight train, many times they're anxious, they can't settle, they can't relax, they're all over the place. Yeah, like, what's that, what's that, what's yeah. that, what's that? And that's stressful, it takes a lot out of the dog. So to be able to then have the dog just walk in a calm manner, it takes a lot of stress away from the dog because dogs don't like being stressed by If nobody teaches them how to like, sort of calm down, yeah. they will, often they will stay stuck. Yeah, Do so. Walk more with him? Yeah, walk more with him. Let's go all the way around. That's it. Wait, see that you stopped and he went with you. So, yes. Sorry, you stopped and he stopped yeah. with you. You're now together. This helps with the recall. And look, you've got like basically two fingers. It's amazing. <laughs> but 
But that also tells me the fact that he'll give up pulling so easily, that he doesn't want to be in that anxious state. Because often when dogs just give it up just like that, they're crying out for just that little bit of relaxation. Someone's saying, look, just calm down a little bit. Yeah, so bring him back to your right. Beautiful. So when we go out for a walk, mm -hmm. he has total free reign. Mm -hmm. And we just let him do whatever he likes. Mm -hmm. um, he might come to us and we'll throw sticks. Mm -hmm. He lays down for a stick. But generally he runs like probably a mile radius yep. around us and then comes back to you know, every so often to see that we're still there. But, um, you know, he, he doesn't really like us. And it's only at the very end of the walk that we will ever get him back. Because okay. he's kind of... Right, at the end of the walk, he knows the route that we're going, whatever. What I would do personally is for the next week, I wouldn't take him to a field at all. No, I would simply just focus on lead walking. Because like I said, it's a lost art. People are so hell-bent on letting their dog do whatever it wants and have that run around, have that freedom, that what actually happens is you give the dog too much freedom, so yeah. it then has no limits, which also creates anxiety because the dog doesn't know how to switch off. The walk represents, we're going there, I'm going to chase sticks till my heart's content, yeah. I'm going to have my nose glued to the floor till my heart's content, Chasing and I'm only going to come back yeah. when I feel like it. So it's not about not letting the dog do it, but first of all, you have to teach the dog how to be calm. Once you create that calmness, yeah, you can create excitement because you know how to bring the dog back down to calm. But if you practice excitement, excitement, excitement and very little calm, or the dog only is ever calm when it's reached the point of physical exhaustion, yeah. then you have a dog that's all over the place that doesn't listen. So I'd do this for the next week and then I'd slowly start taking him over to a field. But I'd have him on a long lead, yeah. like a 30 foot lunge line or something yeah. like that. Let him drag it around with him. Yeah, you don't have to hold it, but if you call him back to you and he doesn't listen, step on the end of it, pick it up, bring him back to you so he knows there's no negotiations. Yeah. Yeah? So when you start bringing back the field, bring it once or twice a week. Yeah, But always start with a nice structured walk first. So take Chewy to the park. Don't put him in the car and drive him there yeah. to begin with. Because that he will see the car, oh, I'm going to the field. Yeah. Walk him if possible. Yeah, Get some of that pent-up energy out. Because a calm mind will listen to you. Yeah. yeah. So we'll just walk off. <laughs> you have to gradually, slowly bring back the rewards but the way you can control the freedom. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right now you've given him all these rewards, but you haven't taught him there's limitations to these rewards, yeah. so he's just gone with it. So you slowly start to reintroduce them, but with new rules. Just like the lead walking, he knows that when I've got a lead attached to me, he thinks he just has to pull to get where he wants to go. You're now gonna teach him you're gonna to get to go where you want, but there's rules first. Yeah. We walk at my pace, in an enjoyable manner, and then you get your reward. Yeah. But the 30 foot line is gonna give you access to then stop him if he starts running around like a lunatic. Yeah. So you can retake control, so, because that's the other thing. Often when he's off the oh, lead, oh, 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 that's go. it, bring him back to your right. Yeah. See, that was you making all the decisions. YouTube videos and thought what should we do oh it's impossible he's too independent he's just you know he's got a mind of his own or it. we're never going to sort this out we'll just have to let's do this in 10 minutes it's, <laughs> it's quite amazing I mean, Jay was saying to me oh he's fine with me he doesn't put on the leash and I was like I honestly didn't believe her I didn't believe her no but again because Jay she, she's a home builder and they have multiple people's dogs so they, so they have doing. to have yeah, they know what they're doing, but also they have to have that certain level of control because they've got multiple dogs. Yeah, do Whereas when it's just you and your own dog, so many times you can go, oh, okay, and you allow them to get away with things until it becomes a problem, yeah? Just like often when you give your children to someone else, they go, oh, yeah. they were angels. You're like, really? My children? They're arseholes for me. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. But we went out for, um, on Sunday, we went to this country fair. Mm -hmm. Everyone had their dog. We didn't take Chewy because we knew it'd be a nightmare. Oh, you can take Chewy now. But Taking Chewy, that will be... So he was at home for like six hours on his own because we were out and we didn't feel we could take him. Even though dogs were allowed. Yeah, but, so um, you, you, you join my classes now, right? Just to further your training, right? But there's no reason why Chewy can't go to places with you. Yeah. Look at him. I know, he's amazing. And then what you do, right, so just stop here, ask Chewy to sit. Sit, Chewy. Sit. 
that's it. Then what you do is take his head cut a bit off of his nose. Yeah, bring this clasp thing back down. Yeah. You wait for Chewy to look at you. Chewy, sit. Ah, ah. Come here. Good boy. Wait for that eye contact a little bit. Break. And then take Chewy. Go on in, mate. Onto no, the okay, yeah. yeah. So because you're not going to be taking him to the park or things like that. So now you let Chewy just have his little bit of freedom. So now Chewy can be in front or off to the side if Chewy wants to sniff. But the key was you did it on your terms when you said so. But the rules still apply. So if he starts to pull, I'll just pull back and then I relax. And then you see how Chewy looks back. So just because I'm giving you a little bit of freedom, Chewy, doesn't mean take the piss. Yeah. So he's pulling, flick back a little bit and then relax. So what I'm saying is have this freedom. And of course, if he decided to take the mick with it, then what you could do is you could put him back on his head collar so you still have that little bit extra, not his head collar, sorry, the figure of eight slip lead. So you still got that little bit of extra control, but attach another lead to it so he's got a little bit of longer freedom. Okay. Yeah? Yep. So you're just gradually reintroducing his freedom, but with limitations. So it's not about not letting the dog sniff. It's not about not letting the dog cock its leg. We want him to be able to do all of those things. Yeah, we just want him to do it in a more controlled manner when we say so, when he pays attention to it. Ah, good boy, yeah? But again, any time he goes into that, I'm gonna try and pull your arm out of the socket, then what I do is I just plant my feet in the ground, go ah, ah, wait for him, that lead to go relaxed again, and then carry on, yeah? Because that's where a lot of people go wrong. They teach the dog talk nicely, but as soon as they give the dog freedom, that's it, they like lose the battle. Yeah. Stages, and then from this stage, 30 foot lead until you don't need a lead at all. Chewy, this way, and then you, come on, this way, and then you put in the commands, for instance, that you would use for when Chewy's off the lead as well. Don't like, just wait for Chewy to be off the lead before you go, Chewy, come here, or Chewy, this way. Chewy, come here. Yeah, you're so good, yes you are. Yeah, so you can put some of those, nice, put some of those recall practices in while you still have him on the lead. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then, once Chewie's had his little time, take the phone a second. Chewie, go on, do sniff there, cock your leg if you want. There we have a good little sniff there, actually, in someone's garden, I thought that was an alleyway. Yeah. And look, yep. And then once Chewie, because obviously this is just for showing purposes. But then once Chewy has obviously had his little bit of freedom, then you go back, figure of eight. So what you do, just hold it, twist the lead, like so, so it makes a figure of eight. So completely open the slip lead, twist it over the snout, then from this bit, just pull it down, tighten it. Just make sure this bit's all round nicely. Then you've got this clasp that comes down, keeps it in position. Make sure his ears aren't caught up. Make sure it's not too tight on his snout, but not so loose that he can just brush it and it falls straight yeah. off. Then you go chewy, come on in. And then you go back to structure again. And you go back and forth in between this structure, reward, structure, reward. And I don't need food for this, I don't need toys for this, because the reward is freedom for this. Yeah. yeah? Uh, where are you going? We go this way, Chewy. Yes, we do. Yeah? Have this Chewy. Model student, okay. Chewy. But Chewy, he's no different to most of the dogs I meet. People think that their dog pull like freight trains, like just like yourself, and you try all these different tools and techniques, and you watch all these videos, but the reality is, it's really easy to fix. It's just knowing, isn't it? Yeah, no that's why I'm starting to do these walking to hill days. And somebody contacted me because I, I, I said, oh, it's 50 quid. Yeah. Come to me, we'll teach your dog to walk properly. To me, that's an investment. That's like half the price of like a normal session, right? Just focusing on getting your dog to walk yeah. properly. And some lady was like, I think that's a bit expensive just for an hour. I was like, well, it's actually gonna be less than an hour. It's only gonna take me like 15 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. Because that's all it needs. The reason I'm not advertising, I'll oh, come here for two, three hours, so I don't need two, three hours to teach a dog yeah. to walk properly. I say a lot of trainers, like three or four sessions just to get the dog to walk mildly yeah. nice. No. So the other thing is I run a lot, uh -huh. and I've never been able to run with him on a harness because he, yeah, he takes the piss. 
Um, so at the moment we can only go and run, I can only run with him in a particular wood. I can't go mm-hmm. any further distance because. But yeah, I practice a little bit of straight running. running. But do you so, think? Yeah, just, yeah, I don't know if you do want to practice running now. Just want to run down the road. Go with it, go. Come to yeah. yeah, jog. Okay. That's it. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. You have full control. <laughs>